going on guys will with gutter fighting secrets welcome back to warrior wednesday where we discuss relevant topics designed to make you a better warrior today i'm going to be talking about leadership and the importance of taking care of yourself so that you can lead so that you can take care of other people you know one of the things that i've learned <clears throat> in doing a lot of small unit tactics training and doing a lot of paramilitary training is the importance of the role of an NCO. And I realized that that's a, it's kind of a Western concept. I, I, I think I was actually having a conversation the other day with a very accomplished uh, 11 Bravo warrior, infantry guy, who's done many tours in Iraq. And the difference between the American military <clears throat> and uh, the Russian or Chinese military. One of those big differences is that Chinese and Russians don't have an NCO corps. For those of you guys who don't know what that is, non-commissioned officer, think of a sergeant, right? So, like, an officer who leads his men, who's not an officer, he's an enlisted guy who came up through the ranks, he's got a lot of experience to give to his men, and he leads them, right? He will take the orders from the lieutenant and from the officer corps, but this enlisted man is of a higher rank than the other soldiers, and his job is to guide them, to teach them, and to lead them in actual combat, in actual battle. One of the things that I've learned in doing a lot of paramilitary training is the importance of that role. The role of being one of the men, but being the leader, right? The importance of being one of the men, but the more experienced guy. <laughs> you know, and a lot of us um, who are still in the martial arts, like for me, right? When I go into my MMA gym, dude, I look around and it's like all 20 something year olds. Like the oldest guy you'll see in there. Typically, at least in the actual MMA fight team, right? Late 20s. And then me, I'm 38, right? So I always kind of relate to this. I find myself a lot dealing with fellow warriors. I'm an older guy, right? So I'm always in that position where, hey, I, I got some stuff I can, I can show you guys, I can teach you guys. You know, if not with the martial arts, just in life in general, right? I'm usually in the position where I'm in somewhat of a leadership role, somewhat of a leadership position. And I realize this, that if I don't take care of myself, and this goes with my personal life as well as my professional life, as well as my life within the martial arts and within the, um, shall we say, uh, private military fields, <laughs> just call it that. Um, if you are any type of a leader, it is essential that you take care of yourself first before you can take care of anybody else. And with that being said, I want to read to you the One Shepherd's Warrior Creed. The One Shepherd's, I don't know if it's their warrior creed, it's their warrior ethos. So let me read it to you guys real quick. I demonstrate love through the faithful safeguard of my tribe and respect the honorable bonds with my fellow warriors. I am able to endure defeat, imprisonment, scorn, and even death, but never dishonor. Excellence, although elusive, is my lifelong pursuit. This is the creed of a warrior. I mean, this is really, when it boils down to it, what we all should be striving for. And if you missed that, I'm going to read it one more time fast, okay? I demonstrate love to the faithful safeguard of my tribe and respect the honorable bonds with my fellow warriors. I am able to endure defeat, imprisonment, scorn, and even death, but never dishonor. Excellence, although elusive, is my lifelong pursuit. We should all be striving for excellence every single day in, honestly, every th single thing that we do. Now, do we all do that? No. We all go through our days. We got shit in our minds. We're doing stuff. We're driving here. We're going there. Work stressful. Our wife is bitching at us. Da, 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 right? We got a lot of stuff on our minds. We're not always seeking excellence through every task that we do. Would it be a good idea to do so? Absolutely. You know, I've traveled around Asia extensively, and um, I've noticed and studied and, and watched a lot of monks. And, you know, everything that they do, everything that they do, they are striving for some type of excellence and peace within it. Painting, cleaning. That's all the stuff that monks do every day, right? They do a lot of mundane tasks. But if you talk to them, which I have, 
They will tell you, yes, we are striving for excellence and perfection with each one of these tasks. And that's a beautiful thing. Now, are we going to all be able to do that in our everyday lives? Like I said, no, absolutely not. But should we be? This is something that we should have in our minds. Because if we strive to do these tasks with some excellence in mind, then it will inspire other people. And they don't have to be in any way subordinate to us. But we will inspire other people to then thusly do those tasks with excellence in mind, at least some level of excellence in mind. Now let's bring it back to the, to the military context when you are leading men, right? One of, the, one of the things that I think everybody admires about the special forces is, you know, like it says in the Ranger Creed, like their care of equipment and professionalism sets them apart from other people, from other units, right? I mean, this is, this is just, it's doing very basic things, right? Like everybody's supposed to look after their kit. But rangers, specifically, are supposed to look after it even better, right? All of the elite units, whether it's the military, whether it's any other type of institution that you can think of, all the elite people, right? They do the same things that everybody else does, just better, with more vigor, and with more care, and with a attitude of excellence in mind. And of course, when you tell somebody, hey, you're special, you're special, you're special, do it better, do it better, do it better than everybody else, that instills in you a very certain... <laughs> we'll get into this in a second, but Green Berets, all the ones I've ever met, and I've met quite a few, they're fucking pricks. But I think that's because <laughs> they're always told, hey, you're special, you're special, you're special. But when you do tell somebody that, reiterate to them over and over again, it really does make them a little bit of a cut above. I remember uh, my first uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu school that I went to, um, AMA Fight Club in Whippany, New Jersey, right? My professor was John Helwig. He really did that. He, he Every single day that you came in there, he said, we, our school is special. We are different. We train you harder, which they did. It, it is, it, he wasn't lying. And it made us fight harder. When we went to competitions, we fought better. We took more golds and more medals in general. And this is something that we can utilize. This is something that we can absolutely utilize when we are leading men, or women, whatever, in battle, in any situation like that, in business. This is a technique that we can utilize. We can tell them, look, I'm going to push you because you are going to do it better than every other, every other person out there. You are going to be more elite. You are going to be special. And so I'm going to push you harder. And then you can constantly reiterate to them, yes, you are different. You are better because I am making you do it more, do it better, do it harder so that you will be better. This is a very important, and this is a very important technique. You can't lie to them because if you tell them they're better, but you don't make them do anything, then they're not really better, and they're going to get their ass kicked. I tell this to all of my students who come and train with me, and I've had a few over the years, more than a few. Um, look, I'm going to push you hard. I'm going to make you do more burpees. I'm going to make you do more reps. I'm going to push you harder than you would like me to, and a lot of people can't handle that, but the ones who do end up becoming very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, like very good. I instill my warrior ethos into them, not my warrior ethos, but I instill warrior ethos into them. Every session we have a talk for at least a minute about warrior shit, strategy, this type of stuff. They end up becoming... Um, and I'm just going to say it, like, not because of me, but because of them. They become better people, and they certainly become better warriors. And that's because I expect more. I expect more from my students because I, I, I demand more, so thusly I respect more, but I end up getting more, and they end up getting way more. The importance of taking care of yourself, though. Will, did you forget about that? I did for a second, but now I remember it. The importance of taking care of yourself is, is paramount because if you're not taking care of yourself and if you expect any one of your men or your students to do something that you are, you're not, you're, you are yourself not capable of, well then fuck you. 
You're one of those piece of shits that like nobody likes. And like you're a terrible fucking leader. Anything that I would expect any of my students or men in battle to do, I, I will do it myself. And when I have been in NCO positions out in the field during field training exercises and whatnot, and I've done it multiple times, um, I will take the first watch. I will take the first patrol. I will take the shitty fucking jobs to demonstrate to my men, listen, I am going to do this shit myself. I'm not one of those leaders who tells you to do something and sits back and kicks back in the hooch. I am going to do it myself, so I expect you to put the fuck out with this easier task that I'm giving you. I will literally take the shitty patrols. I will say, look, I'm beat, guys. I'm going to take this patrol with so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And so and so. When I get back, who's kicking out after that? That's the leadership that we need. Even though you're dead tired, even though you've had one MRE that day and you're fucking hungry, like, you kick out first. You kick out first, and then you take those shitty patrols. You take the first and the last watch, all right? You do it. And thusly, you are going to demonstrate that anything that you are asking your men to do, you can do it yourself. And guess what? If you're teaching martial arts... <laughs> You should be able to fight. Now, it doesn't mean that every single time you roll or you fight, you need to beat your students. I mean, ideally, in an ideal world, that would be like the way it would go. But sometimes you're just like not mentally there. Sometimes they just are fucking like they get lucky. Sometimes they've been training really hard. Maybe you've been injured for two months and like you haven't been training. You're out of cart. Like it, it happens. It's not ideal, but it happens. But generally speaking, if I'm going to spar with my students, I'm not trying to hurt them, but I would expect that if I needed to go full bore, I would just get them. If I haven't been, if I haven't been doing what I need to do, and I've been sitting on the couch, you know, drinking sodas and freaking eating chips and pizza and getting fat, I ain't no one to learn from. You don't want to learn from a dude like that. That's why when I see martial arts instructors who are fat, I laugh. I fucking laugh, dude. It's like, why the fuck do I want to learn from you? You're not a fucking warrior. You're fat, dude. Like, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to lead me in combat, man. Like, maybe you can, like, maybe you can put up a fight. Probably because you're teaching shit, but, like, really? Like, how for how long, dude? Like, you're fat, man. Like... Don't get me wrong, I've met uh, plenty of fat dudes that are like brown belts and jujitsu and like very, you know, very competent warriors. But come on, man, like <laughs> it's not respectable. So you have to take care of yourself. And you know, that's one of the reasons I, I diet so frequently, right? It's like I've just, you know, not, it's not naked about me here, but you should take in the, the nutrients that you need and not. Not too much more of them, right? I'm not saying you have to like eat egg whites and fucking plain chicken breast with broccoli every single day, but I am saying you need to you need to take the proper nutrients in. You need to get the proper amount of rest if you can. You need to take care of you. And this is doubly important when you step off and go into an actual combat situation or even a combat training situation. You do need to make sure that you as the leader, you as the NCO or even even the CO, right, are getting the proper you know, amount of sleep so that you will be sharp enough to like, think. You are getting proper nutrition. You need to take care of yourself first. Then you can take care of everybody else. You know, Sun Tzu said, over solicitation of one's men will cause great disrespect by his men. Essentially, what that means is if you try to look out for your men too much, ain't good. You got to look out for yourself first. Look out for the bigger picture first, right? If you're leading any type of campaign or any type of mission, well, that mission comes first. You come second so that you can lead that mission. You can actually plan, strategize, and attack. Then come your men. So whilst you are absolutely thinking about their welfare and their good, they're not your priority. The mission is your priority. So take care of yourself so that you are able to take care of the mission. Mission dictates. Remember that. This stuff is so vitally important, so vitally crucial. If you're watching until now, thank you for watching. I respect you. 
Go to fightingsecrets.com is the website, guys. We've got online hand-to-hand -hand combat training, direct download, very solid products, and I am honored to be able to sell them to you. Go to fightingsecrets.com. Until next time, Warriors, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, motherfuckers.